Chapter 21, Learning Lessons on the Fly That fall, Mother went on another one of her vacations with Dad, and I stayed with Aunt Elner. She and I cooked up this idea to get my hair cut. Oh, yes, another fiasco with my hair. I don't know for sure whose idea it was, but she made the appointment with Della, the local licensed hairdresser. Della lived in a ranch house, and I so wanted to see her main floor, but we were relegated to the basement where her husband had built her a nice salon. He had used knotty pine, and it was cute. She was one of those women who had that smart, cut hairdo and wore bright red lipstick. She knew all the gossip, and above all else, it was fun to go there. We got there, and Della was all excited. She started to cut my hair, my long, straight, brown, very thick hair. The hair I had to cover with a babushka last time I had it cut when Mother was away. I guess I didn't learn my lesson early in life and had to repeat it. As Della was cutting, no one mentioned my five cowlicks. Della did not notice, but they steadily grew more and more troublesome. Pretty soon I had a twiggy haircut with five cowlicks. Yes, now I am a rooster. My mother was going to be livid. The women started to realize this and decided to cut a little more. They then put product on my hair, and it looked pretty cute until the product let loose, and I was transferred back into a rooster. Mother was a little mad, but didn't go on too much about it. I think she was thinking I should have learned my lesson by now. I did. I didn't cut my hair again for ten years. But the band instructor was pissed. He kept hounding me on the hair and complaining. He brought it up in class and from the podium. He wouldn't let it drop. He said, now, if you turn sideways on the field, you will disappear. He was so creepy. Why should he even be commenting? Oh, we're still in the old school at this point, and I could see it off in the distance from my bedroom. The band room was on the back of the shop class and detached from the main building. We would often hang out there after school and practice. We were supposed to take our instruments home each night, but Mother hated it. And if I practiced at school, I could avoid her angst totally. We were there one afternoon, and the band instructor asked me to lock up when we were done because he wanted to leave. I said sure, but I totally forgot. I got home and watched TV, snacked, whatever, and then I went to bed. Laying in bed, I could see the band room totally lit up like a Roman candle, and I realized I was supposed to lock up and turn off the lights. I lay there trying to decide what to do when I fell asleep. Guess I wasn't too worried about it. No one said a word, but I did get a little smirk about it in the morning. All is well. We never locked anything, so I guess the school was fine. Speaking of locks... When my parents were preparing for their annual vacation, a fight erupted. Mother wanted a lock on the back door. Dad thought that was foolish. Had we ever been broken into before? This was before that boy from the teen ranch broke in, and of course, so the answer was no. But Mother was insistent. Dad was completely bored by her and her argument and continued to say no. Mother was growing more and more agitated. Dad said if he put a lock on the back door and someone broke in, he would have to replace the entire door. But if there was no lock, yeah, someone could get in easier, but he wouldn't have to replace the door. She was not handling that well, but moved on to another subject tied to the first. Over the years of collecting, Dad had accumulated three blue bank bags full of old silver. There were silver Liberty dollars and Kennedy half dollars, silver dimes and buffalo nickels, along with a small batch of wheat pennies. Mostly the dates ran from 1860 through 1930s. Dad had bought several silver collecting books, and we had researched all the coins and never found anything worth more than $25. Many of these old coins only held their original face values, but still, the bags were pretty heavy. There was apparently some value in the bags, and Mother wanted them out of the house for the impending vacation, especially if Dad refused to lock the back door. Dad thought this was about the stupidest thing he'd ever heard. Long about then, he went out to the back porch shed and got himself a nip. Well, this should help bring clarity and agreement to the situation. They fought a little longer and settled on a plan. Mother was to hide one. Dad was to hide one. And the third was to go to the safety deposit box at the bank. Mother hid hers and took the third to the bank. Dad hid his. Dad really hid his. He hid this bag in 1967, and he died 10 years later, and we never found it. Mother lived in the house another 10 years, and she never found it. 
Over the years, it turned into a game when stuck at your mother-in-law's house for the weekend. The boys would go down into the basement and test every rock looking for something loose, which there were plenty. Mother and I created a working theory about the bag of money. Dad was slipping out back to get a nip once in a while, and we think he set it in the bottom of the trash barrel and forgot about it. Then it was thrown away. For me, the problem is the weight of the bag would surely have been noticed, but again, my dad liked to drink. Two constants in my life were supper time and periods. I enjoyed supper time. Supper time was the most relaxing time of the day. Everyone tried to drop any shenanigans they had and just enjoy the food and talk. Dad would tell stories of the day and we would all chime in sharing some of our day. Not too much, but some. Mother put on a real meal every night. She usually shopped once a day at 4.45 to be exact and then came home and made supper. Well, she didn't exactly make supper. She planned, purchased, or had stored what she needed, but then she would call about 3.30 with instructions. Jane learned early on to run. I did not. I liked the attention. Mother had me cooking a mean roast at 8. I could brown the meat, clean potatoes, add the three sisters, which is celery, onions, and carrots, make a little broth or just water and get it all cooking. Then she would come in the back door and make the gravy and mash the potatoes and supervise the setting of the table. This is where it got interesting and much different from meals today. She wanted the pickles and olives, bread and butter, a salad, and a can of corner beans. She loved carrots julienne, so we had that sometimes. Most times we also had coleslaw to bring out of the refrigerator and of course a gallon of milk and a little dessert. Dessert was canned peaches or pears from the basement or ice cream with fruit compote to drivel over the top not usually cookies or cakes. We loved blueberries with milk and sugar poured over the top and currants, which no one has anymore because of the infection that wiped them out. We would play a game, guess the number, to see who had to go down into the fruit cellar and retrieve our dessert. You could play this game two ways, get the number first or play to force someone to say the number. Dad always chose the number because in all reality, he was not going to the basement to retrieve anything for us. Yeah, we should have just set the four roses by the peaches, and my whole childhood supper experience would have been different. Periods were different. I hated periods. Periods came too, way too regularly. Sometimes it seemed one just in it and another started. Supplies were always a problem. If you could get Dad to just give you money, then you could go buy what you wanted. Well, after announcing to the town you needed supplies and got the guy to shut the cash register and come over to reach what you wanted anyway. At least no ladders were involved. We were planning a fall trip to the cabin, and Mom and Elner cooked up a plan to come up separately. I didn't really care about that, but being on the road alone with Dad could be a little thrilling or terrifying. At least Jane was with us. We sat in the back. He had several spots we stopped for him to go in and pay the toll. Again, if we're good, we got potato chips and pop. But how much potato chips and pop can two girls consume? After about West Branch, he decided to two-track it onto Luzerne. I was bleeding like a spring bubbles up, constant and full-bodied. The last two bars were too yucky to consider using the bathroom, but now things were getting serious. Jane was no help. I kept asking Dad to stop, but he was a little P.O.'d I didn't use the last place. I said I didn't have to pee then, but now the pop is getting to me. He was totally unimpressed and could care less. I knew I was now bleeding through to the seat. Please, Dad. Nope. Found another two-track he was sure would lead us in the right direction. He threw another can out the window over the car to the right side. Jane started talking about the new owl give-a-hoo anti-littering campaign, and Dad laughed. I begged some more, but on we went. Finally, he stopped at a roadside gas station slash party store. I'm not sure we could really call this a road or that a store. If I could somehow, in my imagination, dream up a place so old, so decrepit, so smelly, and actually sinking into the ground, this would be it. It was built with vertical, wide planked pine that was rotting off at the bottom as the building sank. The floor was like walking on a bog, all squishy and wet and soft like a million little mold spores. This really old, hairy, skinny man pointed me towards the bathroom. I grabbed Jane and made her go with me. 
The toilet was unbelievable as it had sat filthy from World War I and it too was sinking into the ground along with the floor. I don't know how I got cleaned up or if I just accepted the fact that this was my new reality. But we got the hell out of there as fast as possible. Off to the cabin that had a wash bowl in the kitchen and an outhouse out back. How much longer was this childhood going to last? I had many more experiences with inadequate supplies, lack of knowledge, and just plain inattention for mothers, too. I went canoeing with a family once, and it was the longest week of my life, and of course I was on my period. Jane and I knew nothing about canoeing, and my sisters and brothers thought a 30-second lesson was enough. It was probably not enough. Jane and I went from bank to bank, yelling and screaming at each other, much to the delight of others. When it got boring to watch us fail, the family paddled ahead and left us to our own devices. We were scared, or at least I was scared. Jane would never admit anything like that, so she soldiered on. I wanted to climb out when we got to McMaster's Bridge and find the nearest road and hitchhike out. Jane would hear none of it. Besides, I was all bloody. Who's going to pick me up? Pick me up.